Okay, so primarily we are what we discussed is uh, you need to be able to evaluate two different assemblies at the design stage. So, we said uh, how do you evaluate an assembly in a quantitative sense is we will look at the time that is taken for the assembly, but the time will be dependent on different uh, aspects of what is the size, what is the weight, what is the symmetry. So, we took a few stuff of that and we discussed how to quantify those and how that is tabled in Boothroyd. Currently, it is a software. So, you go and choose that thing, it will automatically tell you this is what the time is, but this is what goes in the back end of that particular software. Okay? And I guess you might be able to change or moderate those values a little bit. Okay? So, finally, it will give you an assembly efficiency that is one particular number or a metric that you are looking at. So, you look at uh, A, B, C, D and then you look at what is the assembly efficiency for each of them and you choose the one that works for you the best. Okay? I have a problem with this assembly, what could it be? You understand right, so you put this, okay, it will go, this is a point of, this is a point of pivot, so it will just keep doing this, okay. So, this alignment need not be straightforward, you cannot, you cannot put a guide here obviously, you cannot put a guide, okay. So, what is a potential solution? Something else? Increase the length, eh? and that does not matter, the rod is actually lengthier than this, that does not matter. To do what? What will happen, that is a good answer, the thickness of the wall is a good answer. But what will it essentially do? If you increase the thickness of this wall to this much, let us say, what is it going to do? How will it help the alignment of this rod? The answer is can be considered right, but what is going to happen? Huh? It is more constraint. Okay. So, what is going to happen is, it is going to sit. So, right now it is going to do this. When you increase this, it will sit. It will sit like this and then you can keep sending it okay. and then finally, it will go there. Okay. So, that is one. So, it is more like a more, more point of contact is more now. Okay. Instead of just one, you will have like point of contact is more. So, the the rod or the cylinder can sit and then it will go. Okay. The point of contact is more, so the surface contact is more. So, one the other solution is what uh, this is a textbook solution, but it is not necessarily true that you can do this in all cases. Okay. This is a case in which uh, something like an wood or plastic you can do this, okay. not in a metal. A metal cannot maybe it will not let you do this because metal cannot plastically deform. Okay, so, there is a problem here if it is a metal based stuff. This is usually in wood or plastic you can do this. Okay. Okay, I will change this, but let me ask you the assembler does not know what is to be assembled the next. Next. Okay. So, most times end up assembling it in a wrong way left to right. You understand right? You understand what I am saying? This is part 1, this is part 2. Okay. But the way it is currently, this has to be in the left side uh, rather right side, but there is no guarantee. I can always flip it and do it. How can you guarantee that? Some concepts that we have discussed itself will help you. Yeah, that is visual inspection. You can have a marker here or you can say this is the left side, this is the right side. Hmm? No, this is not a marker, this is a hole. 
Yeah, you need to convey that information, yeah. But these are like uh, pretty much, you now they say like what is the best assembly? They said you should be able to assemble it using a boxing glove. You should wear a boxing glove and you should be able to do the assembly, okay. So, it is as good as that without saying I should know that this is how it is. I should not go through some manual or something. It should not let you do it that way, it is as simple as it is. Hmm. Hmm. So, the, when the starting point, uh, if it is like aligned so that it can directly go in, the opposite in the other, in the other uh, opposite side, it might not be directly aligned. Yeah. So, basically, it could just be this symmetry. Currently, these two screws are symmetric to the axis, that particular axis. You can actually change, you can just put the screw a little above. So, that if you do it the other way, you cannot do it. You understand what I am saying? That could be one solution. What else? There are plenty of solutions for this, plenty of solutions. Visual cue is something that he told. We can do, you can put guides here, you can mark it left, right, something like that. Or you can have an LO thing here, you can have an LO, you should say LO goes with LO. But that does not uh, help here, right? Because that the SIM card goes and sits in a shape that also has that corner sliced. Huh? No, no, these are the only two parts. <laughs> these are the only two parts. We can make a shape on part one and part two can fit on that. No, no, even with the existing part, what can you do? Agreed. Let us say that you have something cut out here and you should have the similar one there also, so that it goes and sits. That is possible then. Okay. So, there are multiple solutions, right? You escape two solutions, fine. Now, let us let us look at this example. Okay. The lids need to be, the lid needs to cover the base, sorry. This is the base, this is the lid. The lid needs to cover the base. Snap fit is not an answer. Do not say snap fit. There are two screws. I put the lid and then I put the two screws to tighten it. I'm perfectly fine. Can this be improved? How? So, the, uh, the inside diameter of the lid, hmm. uh, sorry, outside diameter of the lid should be equal to the uh, inside diameter of the lid. Then how will you put it in? The, in so the lid uh, has to go in. <laughs> then after it closes, you should also be able to remove it without cutting. You know that is just uh, handle will just go and sit, right? How will it go in? It it should be it's a snug uh, it's, it's a snug fit kind of a stuff. I might have liquid into it, and when I transport it, the liquid should not come out. Sorry? No, I'm not getting your point. See, it's like this. You are saying that you are going to put a lid like this with a handle. How how will it tightly fit? Like the container This is you cannot change the material. Let's say, <laughs> let's not change the material. If you want, I'll say the material is iron, some kind of iron or steel. That's one thing. So the the only thing is, what is the fastening or the assembly mechanism in this? The screws. 
the screws are likely to take one minute. Can you quickly do that? Something like he says, you put two things and then lock it. That still, that, that is a catch that I am saying, it does not go in, it stays outside, the lid stays outside, okay, and then you lock this guy. Hmm? Okay, so that is one solution. So we will see what the solution is, okay, in the next slide. The next one is, in this particular kind of stuff, is any particular assembly criteria violated? This is one component. Orientation, huh? why orientation? Imagine that it is like a holding like the T thing that you have seen, people hold it. Do not don't imagine that, but I am just saying, it does not matter whichever the hook is, it will still hold it. You are just going to pull it like that. If you meant that along the axis, it can be anywhere, that is not a problem. Tangling, this will go and tangle into the next one, okay, or it can tangle into the next one. So, that is could be a problem. We will see what the solutions are. So, in this one, what they have given as a textbook solution is to introduce a small projection. So, now what happens is if the projection is there, you cannot keep it like this, it will it will protrude out, correct. So, it will be like that, that is one thing. In this one, just like what he said, it is a buckle, but it is not a buckle lock. I am only reducing one of the guys, okay. So, I can just take this guy, open it fill whatever it is, put it and just one screw. So, you are getting rid of one screw time, that is all. And this is ok, it should have these, but what happens is you can have thin sheets cover those holes. Upon shipping, you just pierce these guys and send them out, that is all, ok. So, that they do not tangle with each other, that is one simple and then you keep it simple like this, you know, instead of keeping it like this, that is one thing. Or you can also do this, instead of holding it like this, you can keep it like this, so that this gap is so small that it will not get tangled. So, now we will take a retrospective, ok. So, right now we all had a perspective, right. So, we on the retrospective, it is not an exact estimate, DFA is not an exact estimate of the time or cost involved, it gives you a idea of what is the time and what is the efficiency, but it is very systematic, there is no, it provides a ballpark number, ok. It is usually used in the initial stages, the moment you, you are done with the prototype, you have the actual value, right. So, it is usually used only in the initial stages of assembly, using standard work tools, ok. For instance, fastening two points with the screw includes handling the screw, taking the tool, finish the fastening and replacing the tool, but all that is not captured in this in one sense, it just says the tool time. For instance, taking the tool, finish the fastening, replacing the tool, that part is not captured, ok. In larger assembly, this is done automatically. So, this is what we have discussed so far is only manual assembly. In larger assemblies, uh, they use robotic stuff, but the idea is the same, mm, concepts change a little bit, that is all. And separate data maze needs to be maintained and developed and maintained, that is what they have done. So, robotic assembly, there is a separate one that is available. And each company also have their own DFMA set of rules and tools and all that. For an initial estimation, they do all these things, but they have their own legacy to uh, depend on, ok. So, this is again, we are not going to get into the details of this. For instance, we are only talked about a single part assembly, single person assembling and all that. But in real life, when you see the assembly line, like lot of people one after the other, they do quickly, right. So, for instance, uh, the handling times tabulated are based on some assumptions, saying that the part is available right there. So, you can just take it, right. 
but imagine that there is an inventory okay one day they are going to assemble about 100 of those control uh, regulators that we discussed a uh, control assembly regulator assembly right so then what happens that particular the first part that we discussed the regulator will be kept there the screws will be kept there how many regulators 100 regulators will be kept there so what happens is the person have to get up walk there go get it and come from here to here i might be able to place it with one hand but from there to here i might not be able to bring it in one hand that to 10 times 100 times i might not be able to bring it in one hand so then you need to plan all those things that's what this particular chart talks about it does not account for the major body motion of the worker it just assumes that it's all on the table and then you can do it if it's greater than 5 pounds or 12 inch in size might not be able to place always within easy reach you cannot just keep it right here screw nuts yes you can do it but the parts that are slightly heavier and all that you keep it away and then you bring it okay and again you cannot keep all of them right around you there are multiple people that are sitting and there will be uh, you know these assembly lines are going in front of you so you just need to assemble and do it so for instance there are storage bins by the side of you and then the conveyor belt takes the parts that you have assembled it comes from the previous person you assemble the next one and then it goes right and then this is called the work study okay there are there's a big research area that says how are you going to optimally store all these things okay so for parts that are large and need to be stored modular assembly centers are preferred and this is just an idea this is a workbench you have a storage rack wall panel additional storage auxiliary and with this if you have a vertical cross section of this you will know they will say that uh, you know easy to i mean heavy to lift should be at your hip height something that is not very lift that you can bend and take it it's fine okay something that is very easy for you you can just lift it from there so you just keep it above so that's a separate research area called work study on that this is just to give you an idea okay this is exactly what i talked about okay so this is assembly work table and uh, large and heavy parts large and medium small and heavy large and heavy they have different things and they might have carts to help you bring that the tools are immediately placed here the bin items are here so this is just a layout idea okay all these arrangements do they really make a difference that's what this chart talk, talks about distance to storage location acquisition and insertion time per part you can see here parts collected and inserted one at a time using one hand you can see how this axis is going five parts collected simultaneously and inserted one at a time using two hands you can see what the difference is so imagine it's placed 2.5 meters it is a uh, the time is about or 2 2 meters the time is roughly 2 seconds it's roughly 4 seconds it's twice so you collect it does it matter if i go take one assemble go take the second one assemble go take the fifth one and assemble or should i bring all five of them keep it there and assemble one by one obviously bringing them together but then it again depends whether you can carry all five of them or will there be a cart that will let you do that so all that needs to be analyzed so that assembly stuff kind of gives you an idea but there are additional issues that you need to take care of and these are this will allow you more precise organization of these things will let you uh, conserve time which means save money okay and increase your assembly efficiency okay with this we'll wrap up the dfa part mm -hmm.